Hi, welcome to Moments with Marilyn. I'm your host, Marilyn Boyer, mom of 14 homeschool kids. It's my privilege and my passion to share tips and tools to make your journey easier. Thanks for joining me today. We are going to continue our study um, on Addiction Proof Parenting by Mark Shaw. He's a biblical counselor and I found his book really helpful. I read it just recently actually and I found so many things in there that rang true with how I raised my kids and I think you'll find it pretty helpful. Okay, today we're going to talk about insights on parenting from the Bible. By the way, I think this book's out of print, but I looked on Amazon and it is still available as a used book. Proverbs 22.6 says, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Training cultivates your child's heart to possess the correct motivation to please God in how he thinks, speaks, and acts. And it's our job to help him see what was taking place in his heart and how God's word addresses all issues, this issue and all issues. So remember, as we said last week, pleasing God is our top priority, and that's what we need to teach our kids. Did what you did please God? Was this pleasing to God? Help your child to put off wrong behavior and put on right behavior and thoughts. Now this is not as easy as it sounds, but you know, it's ultimately God's word that will change a child's behavior. And it's as God's word gets into their mind and works its way down to their heart and they learn how to implement it in their life. That's what will permanently change their behavior. Not any little tricks that you do. Your job as a parent is to point them to Christ. Christ works through you as parents to teach your children and turn their hearts to him. That's what it's all about. So when you are dealing with your children, and you feel kind of overwhelmed, remember, you're doing what you're doing for the Lord. You are pointing your kids to the Lord. You are pleasing God by raising your children, really his children, to serve him. So we need to teach our children to honor their parents' God-given authority. You, as a parent, are not perfect, and you're going to make mistakes. But your kids need to learn to obey you anyway. Obeying parents is ultimately obeying God. It's learning obedience so that they can obey God when they're older. And we knew a child named David when our kids were little. And David was starting to walk between two parked cars into the road. And his dad could see that a car was coming down the road. And he said, David, stop. David did stop. But if he hadn't, he could have been hit by the car. So we use this illustration of a person our kids knew to explain to them why they needed to obey first time we told them something. First time obedience is important. And we would tell them, you obey the first time we tell you to do something. We are happy to explain. After you obey, we're happy to tell you why. You know, his dad could have told him, would have told him, I'm sure, about the car coming down the road and explained why he told him to do that. We want our kids to know why we have rules, why we tell them to do this. It's important for them to understand why, but it's super important for them to obey the first time. So to do this, we developed a little game we call the obedience game, and our kids absolutely loved it. We would bring them all out on the front yard, and Rick would call out commands, walk like a crab, run, stop, lay down. Um, walk backwards and it was super cute to watch the toddlers because they were like two commands behind the other kids but the kids thought it was hilariously fun we would have other families come over that say hey can we go do the obedience game with this family um, our neighbors probably thought we were nuts but our purpose was to teach our kids first time obedience it was fun it was a game and the kids didn't even know that we were training them, but our purpose was to train them to obey instantly. So, you know, if you can teach something in a fun way, so much the better. Uh, your kids need your verbal training, but helping them put it into practice. This was for little kids, they loved it. Um, it was a fun thing to do, we'd do it as a family. Remember, when you do have to discipline your kids, discipline and love. 
There's two extremes. Some people discipline in anger, and that's wrong. It leads to defeated, hopeless attitudes in your child and the desire to escape pain in any way possible. Other people don't discipline at all, and that's wrong too. That leads to growing up. For the kids grow up, they learn to trust in themselves. They make all their decisions with no input from others. They learn to be independent thinkers and distrusting any authority figures. So both of those are not the correct way to do it. So what is discipline? Let's understand that at first. First of all, it is not punishment. Rather, it is training that corrects and molds moral character. It's learning to put on Christ-likeness. It means that your child can't always do what he wants to do when he wants to do it. Kids need guidelines. They need some rules. We tried to make our rules few and simple, but they need the security of having some rules. What is it? It's also not condemnation. Romans 8, 1 says, Therefore, there now is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. The Holy Spirit brings conviction to children of God that's designed to change our thoughts, words, and actions. Conviction may be painful for a season, but it's painful for a good reason. God corrects us for our own good and for his own purposes. We need to teach that to our kids. We must teach our kids that truth. It's amazing what little ones can understand. It really is. Number three, God disciplines us because he loves us. Hebrews 12, 11, we use this with our kids so much. It tells us that discipline for the moment is unpleasant and painful, but it brings about the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. It is important because it builds discipline in our life. It trains us to obey God. The rod and reproof. You know, Scripture tells us the rod and reproof give wisdom. Reproof is simply criticism for a fault given in a gentle manner. Some parents err by using the rod without a reproof, and that's too harsh. The kids don't understand why they were corrected. Others err by giving a reproof, but no rod. We use the rod only in cases of direct disobedience, not for irresponsibility. If our kids were irresponsible, we'd bring them back and have them do the chore correctly. Go back and do it right. Do what you should have done in the first place. If they were disrespectful, we'd have them go back to the person, ask forgiveness, and speak respectfully. So we use the rod only, only, only for direct disobedience. You tell them to do something, they say no, or you tell them not to do something, and they do it. When correcting your kids, it needs to be for their benefit. Guard against taking personal offense at their disobedience because this just creates conflict between the parent and the child. You are to correct only for their good. Children learn obedience from their parents. Children learn to submit to parental authority when parents first submit to the authority of God. Modeling good behavior is much more powerful than words. For our, one of our sons was, had a very strong sense, still does, of, right, of righteousness. Um, and he could, sometimes he couldn't understand why we had to correct him for something. So I made him this simple little obedience book. And I had all the verses about parents correcting their children and children obeying their parents. And it really helped him to understand that mommy and daddy would be disobeying God if they did not correct him for doing wrong. That made so much sense to him. It was scripture verses, we'd go over it, and that just answered his sense of justice that made sense to him. And I remember one time, he was the only child that ever did this. He brought me the spanking stick and he said, I did wrong, spank me. Because he had such a strong sense of justice. Now, the rod and reproof is in scripture, but so is praise. The author, Mark Shaw, suggests that for every rod and reproof you administer, you ought to give your children three times as much positive praise. Now, I don't know how you would actually figure that out in real life, but be lavish with your praise. But focus on complimenting their character, the fruits of the Spirit you see in their life, godly character qualities like 
obedience, attentiveness, kindness, diligence. Those are the things you want to compliment your kids for, not so much what they look like or something they did for you, unless it was showing diligence, showing one of these qualities. But verbal praise should point them toward Christ and God's grace. Forget about self-esteem and focus on self-control and self-discipline. Help your child learn that he is important to our all-loving God who created him or her in his image. Though sin has brought a curse of selfishness to us all, God in his grace has redeemed us from the curse of sin based on the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus on the cross. And that's why... We are created in the image of God, and that's, that's why we need to respect other people. He created all people in his image. But we are not great in ourselves. We're not good in ourselves. We're not to build up ourselves. Anything good in us comes because of the goodness of Christ and the cross. Hey, guys, if you have ever wanted to share a message with others and thought about doing a podcast, I wanted to just recommend Buzzsprout to you. That's who we use. And Buzzsprout is hands down the easiest and best way to launch, promote, and track your podcast. It's super easy. Um, your show can be online and listed in all the major podcasts like Apple Podcasts, Google, Spotify, within minutes of finishing your recording. It's worked great for us. Okay, positive and negative instruction. Teach your child the put on, put off, put on concept that's taught in Ephesians 4, 22 through 24 and other places in the Bible. Habits are never broken, they're replaced. You put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires and be renewed in the spirit of your minds and put on the new self created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. So it's not enough just to stop doing what's wrong. You must put on doing what is right, the character of Christ. If you need help in this, that's what our book, Growing in Wisdom, our Bible study, is all about. We say this is for kids 8 through 13, but it could be used for older and younger, too, younger with parents' help. But it talks about 43 negative qualities, like anger, tattling, unkindness, laziness, jealousy, mocking, disobedience, selfishness, arguing, boasting, complaining, lying, teasing, fearfulness, stealing, cheating. There's 43 of them. And then it gives the opposite, the right thing to put on. Instead of anger is self-control. And it gives Bible verses. Instead of tattling is love. And the way it's set up, there's scripture verses about these negative and positive qualities for the child to look up. So they see what the word says. Instead of just put that off, it's wrong. It's showing them what scripture says, what God's word says. It's giving them insight from the word. So they, and then at the end of it, they draw an insight from scripture after they've gone through the positive and the negative. It's just kind of short answer questions. So they draw the conclusions from the word. Conclusion for not listening, one who listens to instructions will have a long life. That's the conclusion they draw after going through all the verses. But this, instead of just telling your kids, stop doing that, do this instead, it's showing them, it's taking them through many verses where God's word deals with that sin. And that's something we developed for our kids. We were not brought up as Christians. We didn't know Bible verses. We didn't know Bible stories. So when our kids would sin, I would go to the word and I'd want to say, what does the word say about anger? Let me just give you an example of one of the questions in here. What type of words tend to inspire anger in those who hear them? This is from Proverbs 15.1. What type of words should we use instead to turn away wrath? Proverbs 15.18. What does anger stir up? What appeases strife? Proverbs 16.32. What does this verse tell us of a person who's slow to anger? Proverbs 19.11. What character quality should we exercise to defer anger? Proverbs 21, 14, what is a godly way to hold back anger? There's several more pages of questions. And as you can see, the kids go to the word. They find out what the word says about this. 
and they draw conclusions based on what scripture says. It's not just mom saying that's wrong, stop doing it. They learn what God's word says about that, the positive and the negative. So they learn how and why to put on and put off. Now in his book, Mark Shaw says, a great place to start is teaching your kids the Proverbs and the book of James. And we have both of those recorded on our website. Uncle Rick reads the Proverbs and Uncle Rick reads the book of James. James teaches you how to deal with temptation, which is something you have to do every day of your life. It also, in James 4, teaches you how to deal with others when you're wronged and about how to deal with conflict. So we've recorded that as, long as, as well as other passages of scripture, which you are, can get and play for your kids at nap time and bedtime. And your kids will get tons of wisdom from the word throughout their life. Um, you know, it got to where, we started with Proverbs, and it got to where if you started quoting a proverb, our kids could finish it because they'd heard it so many times, played for them at nap time and at bedtime. And it was building a godly frame of reference in them. It was teaching them what God's word said about life and how to deal with people in life and how to deal with sin in their own heart. So it's one of the best things we did. Um, and I found it interesting that he said Proverbs and James were a good place to start. A child must learn that he is not the center of the universe. And this starts in the home. They're a part of a bigger thing called a family and a church and a community and a country. Philippians 2, 3, and 4 says, Do nothing from conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Each of you must look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Do you have a child-centered home or a Christ-centered home? This is so important, and my two podcasts ago, we talked about how to put character in action. If you need some help with that, I suggest you go back and listen to that podcast. It was two weeks ago. But I talked about our book, Character in Action, and specific ways that we taught our kids to put these character qualities into action in their church or in their home or in their community. And it gives tons of suggestions for how you can do that. Even with little kids, you don't have to wait until they're teenagers. You can do it when they're little. You, def you want to do it from the time they're little and continue throughout their whole life. And, you know, it has been such a blessing to me. This is one of the things that I feel like we stumbled upon and we did right. Um, not perfectly, but we, we did this, like taught our kids to be servants and to put others first and to look for needs. We would explain to them how to watch for needs, things they could do to help other people. And it blesses my heart so much now to see my adult kids continuing this in their life. They're constantly seeking out ways to help other people and to meet a need. And I, I just can't tell you what a blessing it is. My kids are grown now, but I see all of them continuing this in their life. They are servant-hearted. They, and not perfectly, I mean, I don't want to make out that they're perfect because they're not, obviously. But they, their default is to see how they can help others and to look for ways that they can be a blessing, to seek out a way that they can make a meal for somebody or rake an elderly person's leaves or invite someone over to their house for dinner, someone who doesn't get invitations other places. It just, ah, I can't tell you what a blessing it is to see this carried on in the life of my adult children. So I encourage you to look back at the podcast, um, How to Put Character in Action, because it gives you specific, concrete ways that you can do even with your little kids um, to be a blessing to others. And you can't just say, be a blessing to others. You have to do it. You have to take them by the hand. You have to visit people. You have to go to the nursing home or a shut-ins home. Um, you know, you need to pattern for them how to do this or to a veteran's home. And wow, that's been a huge blessing. We um, interviewed vets and then we would minister to them and looked for ways that we could help them out, elderly vets. Anyway, you'll get lots of ideas in that book. And it's so important. It's a way to change their focus from me, 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 me. I'm important. Me, 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 me. And I think in homeschooling, 
you know, there's so many activities. We want to build well-balanced kids and we want to involve them in this and that and this and that and this program and debate and karate and softball and, you know, it's just endless. There's too many things. If you involved your kids in all that, it would be way too much. But it's so easy to involve them in these activities to build them into great people that we don't set aside time, intentional time, to teach them to serve other people, to be blessings, to be servants. God said he who would be a servant will be greatest of all. And it's, it's a key thing to teach your kids. It's so important. It's not something that you can put off and wait until they're teens or they graduate from high school. You know, we're gonna focus on academics, we're gonna focus on all these activities. You wanna focus on teaching your kids to be servants from the time they are little and it will bless your life triple fold, many fold. Thanks for joining me today. Next week we're going to talk about parenting pitfalls to beware of. And I think you'll find these really interesting. It's some of the things we did and I thought, wow, I'm glad we didn't do more of that. The things that you do, sometimes you don't think about what it's communicating to your kids. So I think this will give some clarity and help you think about what strategies you want to use in dealing with your kids, how you want to communicate with them, and what it's actually saying to them. So anyway, join us next week and we'll talk about parenting pitfalls. Thanks. Have a great week.